This week, I had the privilege to spend a few days observing and admiring the work process at the piano workshop called Klang Manufaktor in Hamburg. This is a place where the common goal is to bring out the absolute best from the instrument by addressing extremely delicate aspects and nuances. Marrying old and new, tradition and innovation, the soul and history of the old wood with new inner parts, strings and hammers is what makes these Steinway pianos special. The dedication and precision of maneuvering the thousand steps during the four, five hundred hours spent on each piano is meshed with a friendly atmosphere and positive attitude. I sat down with the founder of the company, Oliver Grinos, to learn about his approach towards the piano. So we are here with Oliver Grinos, piano lover, first and foremost, <laughs> and founder of Klang Manufaktor, yes. piano builder. What other roles would you name yourself? Hmm. I think a piano enthusiast. Yes, that would describe. It. That would describe. And why the piano? Why the piano for you? What drew you to the instrument? Uh, when when I was a boy, I was playing piano, so it came from the musical end. And um, I always liked to work as a carpenter. And then at school, I also discovered um, audio engineering for myself, sound experimenting, and basically that was when I stumbled across piano building. Mm. And um... There is a team of 20 people, yes. around 20 mm -hmm. people working here at Clang Manufacture. Tell me a bit about the teamwork and about how you choose your team members. Um, the teamwork here is that we don't have um, craftsmen that do the entire piano, but we split um, all operations into basically bits and pieces, and um, we've got experts for every single area. Because with a high level of expertise um, on every step, you are able to make a better piano. Um, how we choose people, that is a very good question. <laughs> um, people come here, arrive here. Um, if you have a place like, like this workshop, um, I think it's sending some vibrations into universe and people get attracted and come here. So basically we don't go hunting for somebody, but- They find you. They, we find each other. Okay. That's how I would describe it. And then we have to basically see whether the skill set and the mindset is matching, mm -hmm. which is extremely difficult to find out. Um, because it takes a very, very long time to get to a high level of expertise and you never know whether they will actually make it to that level. Yes. So that's now we are here ahead of World Piano Day, which is mm. a yes. celebration happening tomorrow. But it seems to me now that I got to so lucky to spend some hours mm -hmm. and some days here, mm -hmm. that every day is Piano Day here and people do love coming to work and they do stay later than they should or they or normally they would at other places um there was an example yesterday i saw the lady was here at 7 a.m when we arrived mm -hmm. with my friends mm -hmm. she was still here at 8 p.m mm -hmm. and uh, a friend of hers was staying with her for a chat yes. so it's a very free um schedule there is no schedule or um no we, we have a like a 40 hour working week Mm -hmm. But everybody is free to basically arrange for themselves when they are working here. Mm -hmm. um, they are all, all of them, they are all freaks. <laughs> freaks. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, every single of them has basically 
come to that point of realization in life um, that when he's building a piano on his, on his own, it will not be as good as when he works in a group. It takes a village, right? Um, yeah, which is for some of them not the most pleasant thing to understand mm -hmm. <laughs> because you are dependent on others and you have to arrange yourself with others. But it's we have with all these very, very different characters that are working here, um, our big common goal yes. is to build these pianos. So tell me, what is the goal? What is the intention? Why did you found Clan Manufacture in the first place? Um, during my whole professional life, I always came across ideas about pianos. I noticed things. And um, when I was still working for Steinway, it was very difficult um, to actually do all these ideas. Mm -hmm. We could do tests, yes, but um, it was always just just making it to the to below the surface. You know, you could see that actually there is some new ground that you could cover. Can you describe this new ground? Is it about searching for the ideal sound? Is it about a different technique of of restoring or also, this is connected to the other question of mm -hmm. why older instruments? What do they offer that new ones might not? Um, first of all, it is about having an idea, developing an idea of what a piano should be able to do. So what's, what think, does a piano I think have to if do? We, if we talk with, you can talk with many, many piano builders and everybody wants to do a very good piano and want to do a very good job. Um, many of them are spending a lot of time trying to do that. But when you ask them what is a good sound, um, then for many it is very difficult to actually answer that question. And this is why we call this place Klang Manufaktur, because we are addressing these sound issues and we are starting to describe the sound in words that we are looking for the properties of the sound and um, with the properties that make the sound that we are looking for we basically go into every single process and step of the piano and we check whether it's conform with our idea of sound or not yes and for me a piano is some something that speaks mm -hmm. right so for you for, for me the pianist is somebody who speaks mm -hmm. and um, the piano is a transmitter of what the pianist is saying and if many of the of the pianos that i know they are only like semi permeable and a lot of musical intention of ideas get lost somewhere in this big black box <laughs> would you agree with the statement that you Actually, what we are talking about is the hypersensitivity of the piano, that you try to make a full scale of range of colors and yes. different touches to a very, very specific mm -hmm. um, range. Yes, and um, I want to try and make the piano in a very open and energy effective way, um, that what is flowing into the piano is without any distortion or phase shift or anything is being transmitted to the player again, mm -hmm. which is the first thing that happens with the audience. So it's about the speed of uh, reaction and, and communication the, and between the, the player yes, and the and instrument. The, and the clarity and the focus of information that is passed on. When you We once worked with a brain researcher and he said um, all the research that is done is very often in very often happening at the wrong side of consciousness. Um, and he had this very illuminating example. Um, when you walk through a forest, um, I love you're, that totally, already. you're totally relaxed, and mm. all of a sudden there's a crack in the bush beside the, the path. Mm -hmm. You go running, and after two or three steps, you turn your head, and you look and say, oh, it's a bird. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, he always said, 
the first reaction we know that is a subconscious reaction. It's about our survival. The second reaction when we turn our head and recognize the bird, that is a conscious reaction. The subconscious reaction it happens, it starts after about 30 milliseconds. Very, very fast. The conscious reaction, 250 milliseconds, a quarter of a second. Um, so when you look at our senses and when we hear and when we when we play a piano, we touch a piano, so we have a sense at our fingertips and we are waiting for something basically for the hearing to respond to the touch that we have. Um, there's a lot of information going into our brain, coming from the eyes, coming from the ears, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the brain is in constantly, basically, um, monitoring, screening all the input for possible danger. And whatever happens is basically highlighted. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we've got only two senses that we can perceive at the same time. Um, so basically, I'm striking a key and I'm waiting for a sensation and my subconscious is in a very, very nervous state waiting for what what is happening. And then the signal comes, and the normal signal, when it is distorted, when I have a piano with a high level of inertia, which is slow in attack, then this very tense state of recognition lasts quite long. Um, and maybe um, the subconscious has only it's it's like a computer, ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. Danger, mm -hmm. no danger. That's mm -hmm. the only thing it's doing. It's like a relay, mm -hmm. danger, no danger. And um, it wants to qualify this as no danger because that is the door we have to take for musical flow. As long as it is danger, we will never come into a flow state of mind. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is or just to complete the picture, when I'm passing through this door of no danger, after 250 milliseconds, our brain says, ah, I know it's a Steinway piano, I love Steinway pianos. Mm -hmm. But the actual qualification of the signal has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whether we find something is good or not good, um, we cannot influence that and we cannot recognize it because of us as being conscious minds the way that we are it has always happened in the past but it is very very crucial for musical flow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what we are doing is basically we are trying to build a piano for the subconscious mind meaning what does the subconscious mind need to open the door to musical flow wow and this means a very, very low and very precisely defined level of inertia. Mm -hmm. I want this, the ideal thing is when I press a key, um, I'm touching the key and then I'm basically pressing it to the turning point. And the moment I, I am down at the turning point of the key, I need to have my sensation at the ear because that is when I'm trying to respect it. When I'm like with old um, hammer grinds, these old historical pianos, with very light hammers, I typically get the sound prior to hitting. Uh -huh, the, uh -huh. So the fast that it actually. Mm -hmm. um, if it is too fast, it's like skating on ice. Yes. I feel that I'm lacking control. Yes. If the sensation comes too late, frustration. That's inertia. Always have the feeling I need yes, to push yes. this piano. And many, many pianos that we are, they are a fraction too late. And mm -hmm. really, we are just talking about fractions of milliseconds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and what what is the piece in, in, on inside the piano that regulates this? Or what do you do to? So let's say you have an, an instrument that is slow, mm -hmm. response, slowly responsive. Mm -hmm. How can you uh, change that? Um, there are two separate fields. The one is the action, mm -hmm. the mechanical side, 
and the second is the acoustics of the piano. I can influence the um, the mechanics of the piano by the way that I position the leads and the key. If I have leads very far away from the pivot point, um, I need to accelerate these leads when I'm pressing a key, and the further they are away from the pivot point, um, the more inertia I have. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. If they are too close to the key, I'm skating on ice again. Mm -hmm. So I need to find that sweet spot of control. Mm. Um, I've got friction in multiple places. I can regulate the friction. I can lubricate. Mm -hmm. And I can do that to a very, very precise level. And I need a very precise regulation. That is kind of what the action part is. Um, then the hammer excites the string. I've got basically my sound energy going to the bridge and from the bridge into the sound board, and then I get radiation. Yes. Um, what the string is basically doing, it is pulling on the bridge due to the way it vibrates. Um, if I have a sound board that is too stiff and many Pianos have sound that typically are too stiff. It will suffocate the, it will, the sound, it right? It will, first of all, resist the string mm -hmm. and try not to be forced into motion. And um, this, when I look at an attack curve, is a slow attack because it's like, oh, I have to pull it. And then it uh -huh. starts to vibrate. But I have this, it takes a while to get Like going. a slow car that starts it's, to do, do, do like, like that? Yes. I always <laughs> compare, to me, a Steinway piano is like a, I'm always seeing a 100 meter sprinter, mm -hmm. somebody like you see in Bolt. Yes. You yes. know, fully trained, mm -hmm. and he is standing at the start, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I am, as a pianist, I have to push him to get going. And he is standing at the start with his heels firmly on the floor. So right flat. And now I have to push him. So when I'm pushing him, I first have to get him onto tiptoes, and then he's ready to run. Um, and for every key that I'm exciting, he's always on his heels again. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is I want to keep him in his trained muscular body. Mm -hmm. But I'm putting him on tiptoes so that when I'm playing with the piano, he's I, ready. You know, uh -huh, he's just uh -huh. ready to go. Uh -huh, wow. Mm -hmm. And this is the response I want to have at my fingers. And mm -hmm. when you are playing a piano like that, it does everything very precisely the way that you are basically, the information that you give into the key, the piano is doing that, which is a high challenge for pianists. So I must have a very consistent action regulation to offer the maximum of control. Otherwise, you would not be would, would not want to play the piano. Mm. Um, but then I'm hitting the key. Here's my sensation, and it's coming directly to the ear. Mm. And there is no tense state of the the subconscious waiting for information. The information is very clear, very well defined, very precise. And so you get, you had an idea of what this tone should sound like. This is your vision that you have. And basically, immediately you get a response to the ear, whether you were successful. And when you start playing such a piano, you get into a very quick feedback loop with yourself. Mm. And this is, when this happens, the pianist typically says, oh, the piano is inspiring. Yes. But it's not. Or, or, or almost like the piano plays itself. Yeah. I have nothing to do, just mm -hmm. yes. enjoy and mm -hmm. lay back. Yes. Mm. But it's not the piano that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. It is the speed of feedback and you are inspiring yourself. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're doing. We're building a piano for the subconscious. Yes. Let me tell you the story, how I found you. Mm -hmm. It was 
a bit more than five years ago when mm -hmm. I was Googling, searching for a piano to rent, yes. upgrading my current, because at mm -hmm. the time I was working on an upright instrument and I was hoping maybe there's a chance for, for uh, working on a mm -hmm. baby grand piano. Mm -hmm. And your website just popped up. And um, when I saw this instrument, I had a crush. I actually <laughs> had a crush. You know the the heart the heartbeat beating too yeah. fast and 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 it never ever happened. I didn't think it's possible mm -hmm. to have that with an instrument, mm -hmm. you know, and with just a photograph of mm -hmm. the instrument. Mm -hmm. But it was so aesthetically pleasing mm -hmm. seeing the ivory keys mm -hmm. intact, no mm -hmm. cracks, but still you could see on the picture that it's ivory. Mm -hmm. Seeing this beautiful um symbol mm -hmm. but the older way mm -hmm. uh, you know that yes. which is a slightly bigger mm -hmm. and i absolutely had a crush so i had to come to to visit and <laughs> see what is this place yes. all about mm -hmm. and at that time it was in their first or second year right yes. it was mm -hmm. brand new the, yes. the company and then i remember uh visiting with my dear friends mm -hmm. and spending here two hours with mm -hmm. you and you showing me the, the soundboard mm -hmm. and telling me all about uh, all about what you just said also mm -hmm. now and, uh, and many other aspects. And um, this instrument, my baby, mm -hmm. <laughs> was uh, actually not complete. No. In fact, the hammers were not inside, the strings were not inside, it was taken apart because you were intensely working on, mm -hmm. on it at the time. Mm -hmm. But you already got my full trust after mm -hmm. seeing the the workshop and the way mm -hmm. you 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 deal with it and and uh, when you see a piano for the first time when you assess it mm -hmm. do you know its potential or the full potential you discover after you start renovating it or working on it of course i have a very technical view on pianos and i quickly can assess and check whether the substance of the piano still is okay. That, That's a fact, right? You have to... Yes, you just mm. look at certain things and then you basically got a feeling whether there's some severe damage somewhere or whether this is still basically everything needs to be worked on but, but is proper substance. Mm. Um, at the same time, I get a feeling I'm standing in front of a piano and it's a very natural feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a good feeling, sometimes it's a weird feeling. Is it like when you meet a person? Yes. Uh -huh. Exactly. The same. Right? Yes. So it and, and that's instant almost. Like yes. you need a minute yes. to yes. know ninety percent of mm -hmm. of whether it's sympathetic or not. Mm -hmm. It's or yes. And sometimes I stand in front of the piano and I'm asking myself why is it not sympathetic uh -huh. and then I check everything and I don't find anything and um, but I know that I have to revisit this piano and take another look take another look and try to figure out what is feeling this what is causing this feeling mm -hmm. um, and if there is no answer no logical answer what do you do? You you don't deal with this piano. You leave it, or you still try to make it work on an intuitive level. I've done both. Mm -hmm. That is, and sometimes I really don't understand why I had this feeling. And maybe some the piano is packed with information. Mm -hmm. This may sound very metaphysical, but it you can feel what history instrument had. Mm -hmm. um, when you take somebody who plays a violin, Australia various, mm -hmm. um, and it's passed on to the next player, he will say that, first of all, I have to start playing with the violin so that it gets going and, you know, it's like as if it was a fresh instrument. Mm -hmm. um, this piano, this violin has been played for 400 years, so it basically does not need somebody mm. to restart it. Mm. But it's like resetting an instrument. Mm -hmm. um, you know that you are some, there have been many people prior to you, 
and they've all left some some kind of um, information, mm -hmm. and it's in there. And sometimes you have to yes, overcome the information that is in there. Mm -hmm. And when you do a big restoration process, this is what typically happens. It's like clearing the piano. It's like clearing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I had a similar experience two days ago, actually, mm -hmm. when I played the piano that was being played uh, by somebody else on the same day. Mm -hmm. And somehow, very inexplicably, I when I started playing on it throughout my mm -hmm. rehearsal, mm -hmm. I did feel yes. the energy or the mm -hmm. something, although I don't know that other person, mm -hmm. but there was a, a, a signature yes. mm -hmm. from, yes. from that other yes. person mm -hmm. on the instrument. And it took a while to erase that in a way or, mm -hmm. or to make it mine yes. somehow, mm -hmm. trying to. Yes. Is this the same what you yes. say then? Yes. yes. Very, and, very interesting. Um, to me, this is all not metaphysical. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that we typically describe something as physical that we can use in our normal economic world. Mm -hmm. And if something is interesting, that, that we measure resistance of an electrical current or something like that, mm -hmm. then we build devices to measure that and as soon as we have built a device to measure that we believe it mm -hmm. because we can measure it. Mm -hmm. um, nobody really is interested in measuring something like the oral impedance of a piano mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's no economical value connected to that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is why we call it metaphysical. Mm -hmm. but, but, it's, but it's normal. It's our nature, no? Yes, it's we we call everything metaphysical that we don't really have an explanation for. Mm -hmm. um, but this doesn't mean that it's not there. Mm -hmm. When you with interaction of people, we know quite a lot. Um, when you enter a room and there's a group of people in the room, without anybody saying anything, you immediately know what emotional state is in this room. Mm -hmm. You sense it. You can close the door again, and you know mm. whether they had been fighting, whether they had been laughing. You know, it's yeah. like you feel the vibe as being yes, yes, yes. yes. And um, to me, this is not just related to humans. This is also related to material. Yeah. And with the piano, with it being having acoustical properties, we've got the advantage of being able to listen to it. Mm. And then we can hear a lot, so it, it directly addresses our senses. This table does not address our senses. Of course, I can touch it and I can feel a little, but it's more difficult for me to perceive. Yeah.